Last summer, we went on an unforgettable road trip across Zimbabwe. I finally got to take my husband back to my home country for the first time. He got to experience the food, the wildlife, and the most breathtaking sunsets. To explain the story a little better, we have to go back to the beginning. I was born in Zimbabwe and lived there during my earliest years before eventually moving to England with my family. And on the other side of the world, Dan was born in England. Many years went by until eventually our paths crossed. If you're new here, we're Mutsa and Dan. We're artists. I make pottery. I make music and I love woodwork too. And this is the story of my first trip to Mutsa's home country, Zimbabwe. It had been 11 years since I'd last been back home, from England to Qatar, from Qatar to Zambia, and then eventually from Zambia to Zimbabwe, only to be held in customs for three hours because of our drone camera <laughs> without getting a Zimbabwean license before flying out to Zimbabwe. Yeah, we definitely should have sorted that out before we went. It was completely our fault for not looking this up before going and it was a complete nightmare. They threatened to take our drone away and charge $1,000 for every day that it was kept at the airport. It was pretty intimidating to be honest, being questioned for hours, but I eventually provided everything that they needed in order to issue us our Zim drone license so we could finally leave the airport. We arrived on the bustling streets of Harare, Zimbabwe's capital city. Going to the supermarket was especially nostalgic because I got to stock up on sweets that instantly transport me back to my childhood. After over 30 hours of traveling and the airport drama, we were exhausted and very ready to sleep. We tried to sit down and film on our first morning, but we were definitely still super tired and couldn't take it seriously. Staying true to ourselves, we were quick to escape the city in search for an adventure in the wild. One of the many things I love about Zimbabwe are the vendors on the side of the road selling organic homegrown fruit and vegetables and honey. And again, pure nostalgia. Sugarcane always just takes me back to childhood memories. We stopped again to stretch our legs at Mazoe Dam. Mazoe is the district in Zimbabwe that is famous for its iconic orange juice. We drove past many orange groves before eventually arriving at Paradise Pools. We spent the rest of the day swimming and soaking up the beauty of these incredible plunge pools. On day three, it was time to head to Mashingo. And of course, the road trip couldn't kick off without picking up some veg first. My dad picked up some bambaira and tomatoes too. On this day, we had a five hour drive to Mashingo. Honestly, the five hours on the road were spent laughing and talking to my parents as they recounted stories from the past. Until we eventually arrived in the village where my mum comes from. Like I said, I'm really not a city person, so it was really good to be back in the village. I was pretty excited to see my toy trees and tried to get some of the last remaining fruit down from the trees. It was quite a struggle, but we managed to get one in the end. There is something completely magical about going Kamusha. Family homestead sits at the foot of some breathtaking granite hills. 
This is a place where I feel my most connected and grounded. We spent the night eating sadza and catching up with family. The village pace of life is slower and much more connected to nature, and our days spent here were some of our favourite. A lot of time was spent sitting beneath the mango trees and enjoying some popo. course we had a lot of sugar cane too. We were very inspired by the veg growing at the homestead and we hope to have our own veg garden just like this one day. weren't yet ripe because we were there in winter but in the summer these trees are usually bursting with mangoes and they are sweet and incredible. My family really generously gifted Dan a chicken too which was amazing. We didn't really film it because it was quality time with family but on our second day at the homestead we were treated to the most beautiful braai, sadza, borovos, potatoes, salad. It was, it just kept coming and it coming. It was good. Yeah, we were well fed. I think that was one of my favourite parts of the whole road trip, actually, was the people. Like, your family just made it unforgettable. Yeah. We also did some exploring in the hills next to the homestead. My mum pointed out this cacti, which has an edible fruit. It was actually delicious. And whilst we were walking, something pretty magical happened at this baobab tree. The last time that I'd stood at this exact tree was back in 2005. I'd been exploring these hills with my parents and had stopped at the baobab tree when a man bumped into us and saw me playing with my dad's camera and asked us to take a picture of him and his family. So we did and we eventually mailed it back to my family who passed it on to the man who lived in the hills. Now, 18 years later, on the very same hill at the very same tree, we bumped into the man whose picture we'd taken and he recognised me and my parents all these years later. As the sun began to set, we spent the evening catching up with him and his family. It was a really special night that I will probably never forget. We couldn't go all the way to Mashingo without visiting Great Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's home to the stone remains of a medieval city. This ancient city was once part of a large and global trading network. This is one of the most culturally important archaeological sites of its kind in Africa. Obviously, we joined the dance and also attempted to play a bit of mbira. <laughs> the 
the next morning we woke up to one of the most incredible sunrises I have ever seen. On this day, we embarked on an eight hour road trip up to Manikaland to Rusape to visit some family. We stopped for a little break and whilst we were stretching our legs, we noticed this pottery on the side of the road. There is so much beautiful traditional craftsmanship in Zimbabwe, like these hand-woven baskets and these rugs which are hand-woven using baobab tree fibres. We took every opportunity to stop and connect with the woodworkers and artists and find out a bit more about their craft and how they're inspired by nature. Of course, being a ceramicist myself, I had to stop every time I saw pottery. During our road trip, I spotted some stunning red wild clay. I painted it on a pot and began to carve through the layers of clay. attached a handle and fired and glazed the mug. And here is the final result. I see so much when I look at this mug. Fingerprints and the wind whispering the stories of those who came before me. The markings on wild animals, the mountains, the granite hills that make the landscape of Zimbabwe so captivating. Every time I drink from it, I remember that I'm a child of the soil and I come from a country with incredible natural beauty. So after stopping to see the art on the side of the road, we carried on on our journey up to Rusape to visit family. This was without a doubt the cutest chicken coop I've ever seen. After our time in Rusapa, we headed further up north to the eastern highlands, to a place called Nyanga. Nyanga has been referred to as Little England, which didn't make that much sense when we arrived in the dark, but when we woke up the next day, we could totally see why. The landscape was covered in pine trees and there was a thick fog rolling over the hills. I think I audibly gasped when I peeled back the curtains to find frost on the grass. If you showed me this and said it was the Lake District in England, I would definitely believe you. As the sun began rising over the hills, the frost soon melted. Whilst we were in Nyanga, we hiked up to Mutarazi Falls. The last time I was here with my parents, I was four, so it was pretty wild to be back again. As the sun was setting, this beautiful rainbow cut through the clouds and it was such a surreal drive. We headed back to Harare for a brief stop on our road trip and had dinner at Amanzi, which is this beautiful restaurant. The walls are just completely covered in art, like everywhere you look, there's really fun artwork. And the food was good too. And once again, we left the city, picking up some fruit on our way of course, and embarked on an eight hour road trip to Matobo National Park. Everything was going fine until it wasn't. We have just broken down in the middle of a very long, long journey on an extremely long road. The struggle is real today. And things not going to plan. But yeah, hopefully it will get better. If we get to Matopos before midnight, it will be great. Bye. 
Sometimes it's best to make light out of these situations, especially when it's out of your control. Dan decided to get his mic out and sample the sound of this table. And we waited and waited. After four hours of waiting on the side of the road, help eventually arrived and we were able to swap to a car that worked. It was another three hours of driving until we eventually arrived at where we were staying. There were no street lights and it felt pretty sketchy. The next morning we woke up to this. spent the day exploring Matoba National Park and getting some much needed rest after many days on the road. The last leg of our journey involved a six hour drive up to Victoria Falls. at Vic Falls we were greeted by this warthog and some mongoose too. We've come to Victoria Falls and we are now about to go on a game drive so we're already in our safari car, safari car. whatever this is called, <laughs> jeep. <laughs> we some animals. Fingers crossed. We'll see, we've come at a nice time, it's like yeah. three, four o'clock so. This was another truly unforgettable day. So because we're in Vic Falls, we had to do all the classic Vic Falls experiences, which included the Bulma dinner, which is essentially an experiential drum and dinner show. I feel like that's the best way to describe it. It was quite a funny yeah. evening. Yeah, I ate a lot of steak. Yeah, I think there was buffalo steak and crocodile yeah a crocodile tail that was, that was interesting it was interesting it wasn't bad it was a bit like chicken yeah <laughs> welcome to the boma dinner and drum show thank you and i tried traditional zimbabwe beer which is quite interesting it's very thick very yeasty. <laughs> That's a weird way to describe it. But it's yeah. nice. It tasted like beer, but a bit more yeasty, filling, and <laughs> yeasty. <laughs> oh, and you also had mapane worm oh, for the first yeah. time. Oh yeah, very crunchy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they like char grilled it or like overcooked it a bit too much. My mum has made it at home, and it's definitely better when she makes it. <laughs>
Monsieur Tunya, the smoke that thunders, often known as Victoria Falls. The falls are around 1.7 kilometers wide, the full width of the Zambezi River. And the falls sit on the borders of both Zimbabwe and Zambia. The spray from the falls can be felt from around 50 kilometers away. The last time I was here, I was four years old. So it was really special getting to come back with my parents and experience this with Dan too. After that, we headed to Bain's restaurant, which I would definitely recommend if you're in Victoria Falls. We got to have lunch overlooking the Zambezi River. And because we just couldn't get enough of the Zambezi, we spent the evening cruising along and watching the sunset. As we watched the sun go down, we began reminiscing on what an incredible adventure we'd had.